I am Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of Douglas County Board of Commissioners. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Clearly, our show on DCTV 23 that has the purpose of bringing information to you about county departments, programs, and people. Information is essential to being able to think clearly. Welcome to this month's episode of Clearly. It is an honor to introduce my special guest today. Joining me in the studio is Korean War veteran, Mr. John Hanabach, who is an extraordinary person when it comes to speaking about the history of the Korean War because he was there from the very beginning. Good morning, Mr. Hadebach. It's so glad that you're here to join us. And um, tell me a little bit about you. And uh, so glad that you served in the Korean War. I'm honored. And I brought my dad with me today. He was a Korean, uh, Korean War veteran as well. Very good. And I know you and him may have crossed paths, but may or may not. But where are you residing now? Uh, right now, I live in Mirror Lake um, in Douglas County. Uh, been there for about 18 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, enjoy it very much. Douglas County is a very, very good place to live. Where are you from originally? Are you originally native? from Indiana, born and raised in Indiana. Wow. What branch of service did you serve in? I was in the U.S. Navy. The U.S. Navy. Tell me a little bit about your experience. Okay. Um, I graduated from high school in May of 1950. Mm -hmm. The Korean War started on June 25th of 1950. And by July 6th of 1950, I was at Great Lakes Naval Training Center. Wow. Um, so not very long after the war started, I was uh, at Nick in, in training with the Navy. Um, and then was in for the rest of the duration. Uh, was in the Navy until 1954. So through all of the, the Korean War. So went to uh, Great Lakes for mm -hmm. training. Uh, then did a brief spell of training to become a fire control technician uh, for the Navy, uh, and then served aboard the USS St. Paul heavy cruiser uh, for the remainder of the, my time in service and for all of the Korean War. You know, we had an opportunity to chat about uh, Korea, and we talked about the book, The Coldest Winter. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you open the, the cover, when I open the cover, I have some memories from my dad shared about the Yellow Sea and um, talked about uh, MacArthur and I guess Truman, was, uh, President, President Truman was Great. the president at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, can you just tell me a little bit, just take us back a little bit and, and, and share the exper experience and it's also considered the Forgotten War, which it's still, uh, is very high on my uh, shelf of memories. So can you tell me about it a little bit? Well, I tell you, it's not forgotten by those of us who were there. Yes. Uh, I have never been so cold in my life as <laughs> uh, in, in Korea. And I was on board a ship. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't imagine uh, the experiences that people like your father went through who uh, were fighting in those hills. Um, but it was not forgotten by, by us. Uh, it started uh, in 1950, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, and Truman was a president, and MacArthur was serving in Japan at the time as the supreme commander. So the Korean War really came under his auspices. Um, and those of us who were involved thought very highly of mm -hmm. MacArthur. I mean, he was a hero from Second World War. But in retrospect, uh, a lot of his decisions caused really some insurmountable problems in Korea. Uh, he really totally misjudged the, the Chinese participation and involvement, um, and that caused us major problems. Uh, we evacuated uh, Marines and Army personnel <coughs> who had been at the Chosun Reservoir, mm -hmm. which was a very infamous period during the war. Um, and, and, that, that's the coldest I've ever been. Uh, we were in, in, in uh, Hung Nam Harbor mm -hmm. evacuating these Marines, and we were shelling in back of the Marines coming back, um, trying to hold off the, the Chinese while we were evacuating these Marines from Hung Nam. And that was 
from about the 17th of December until the 24th of December, 1950. Um, so Christmas in 1950 was not very oh. comfortable. Um, very cold. So it was very cold and um, we, we rescued a lot of, of service men, and both Army and Marines, as well as North Korean mm -hmm. um, soldiers uh, evacuating because again, MacArthur had misjudged these hundreds of thousands of Chinese that came pouring over the border, uh, well prepared to, to fight the United States, and we were not ready for them. We, d we were totally outnumbered. So it was uh, Truman and MacArthur did not get along well because of, of that, and uh, mm -hmm. he ended up recalling MacArthur from the war. Um, and replaced him with, and uh, with another general. Yeah. Who was the general? What general did he replace him with? What was uh, his name? Ridgeway. Oh, Ridgeway yeah. was the general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your story sounds much like my dad. Uh, he's deceased now. He died in tw 2009. So he lived 77 years and he went in also the same time you did. Mm -hmm. 1950, he was drafted uh, at 18 years old and he went in. Uh, he was in the Army, Special Forces uh, paratrooper. Mm -hmm. uh, and he talked about his horrific experience as well, about jumping down out of the plane. And he always talked about being the last to jump. And I didn't understand what he meant, but he said that we would line up so we could jump out. And he said the same thing. He said uh, there were so many Chinese there yeah. that, uh, that he said uh, we were outnumbered. He said uh, 985 of the men jumped out from his battalion mm -hmm. um, into the that's the war zone. That's mm -hmm. what I would call it for lack of a better term. And he said they were like ants. He said they sh killed all of us except he was just lucky. It was 65 returned out of that wow. 90, 985, only 65 men returned. And he was one of them and he didn't get any strap, no wounds or anything. Wow. No wow. gunfire at all. He just, he was blessed but he said he had a story to tell because he had to crawl on top of dead bodies and pretend he was uh, dead when the Koreans or the Chinese would turn him over to make sure everybody was dead, and he was not, of course. And uh, he talked about the Yellow Sea. And I said, Dad, what is a Yellow Sea? But he, I thought it, a Yellow Sea, I never heard of it, but it is one. Yep. And he said he, he made it to the Yellow Sea, and he don't know how long it took him to crawl there. But of course, when he, when he jumped into the Yellow Sea, he said he took his T-shirt off, waved, a flag, waved it, like a flag and the helicopter spotted him and pulled him up. He received a Purple Heart for that, but I'm telling you, he t everything you said, he said. He said it was cold, we were outnumbered, yep. and he said it was one of the bloodiest wars. Well, it was one that he was involved in, but yep. even in the history books, it was considered one of the bloodiest wars, so. Well, there were I, probably 36,000 Americans that were killed during the Korean War yes. in, in less than three years. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the numbers uh, per year, that's a lot of uh, casualties. Yeah. Uh, the ship that I was on, we would very frequently be called to rescue a downed pilot or somebody uh, that was out at sea. Mm -hmm. um, there would be a lot of aircraft that would be shot up and couldn't make it back to their carrier or their, their base and they would ditch yes. in the sea and we would, if we were close by, pick them up, rescue them. Oh, very so, interesting. But we, we lost uh, 39 guys on the ship that I, from the ship that I was on during the Korean War. We had the largest casualties of the Navy during the Korean War. Oh, wow. Um, so we had, uh, 30 of them killed in one turned explosion mm -hmm. uh, on board the ship. Um, that you know, just was very devastating. So. Where were you stationed exactly in, in the As I mentioned, I was a fire control technician. Now, fire control doesn't mean fighting fires. It means we were in control of the guns mm -hmm. on the ship. Oh. So we did all of the aiming, the, the problem program solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, we were responsible for the ship's radar for gun control. Uh, so my, my duty station and general quarter station was in the uh, plotting room for fire control. We were five decks down uh, on the ship, so about as far down in the ship as, uh, as any station. Um, we were down below the armor belt on the ship. Um, and I'll tell you, when, when that turn exploded, 
uh, we were lucky we didn't lose wow. the entire ship. Uh, and I was down in the plotting room at the time, mm -hmm. um, and we had no idea what yes. had happened. Um, but the fire came within five feet of the powder rooms on the ship. And had they reached those powder rooms, the ship would have totally blown up, would have never known what hit us. Um, and down in, in the plotting rooms where, where I was stationed, um, there was no way to get out. I mean, we were just there. Uh, so. But fortunately, it did not reach the powder room. I mean, yes. But everybody in the turret was killed. They were. Wow. So. Tell me about your experience returning home. It must be, a, I guess, a sad feeling to be considered part of a forgotten war. Well, uh, and, and you know, again, uh, being in the Navy, uh, we, we did three cruises to mm -hmm. Korea mm -hmm. in 50, 51 to 52, 52 to 53. So we would be in Korea for like nine months and mm -hmm. then we would return to the States uh, for a brief period, then go back to Korea. But every time the ship came back, um, you know, it wasn't like hordes of people greeting you at the docks when you return. Wow. Um, People didn't know very much about the Korean War and didn't really care very much about it. It was truly forgotten. So it was it was kind of tough. Uh, you know, you're anxious to get home, mm -hmm. but um, yes. you know, it was it was not something that we were greeted and you know welcomed, and so it was a little disappointing, I suppose, in that sense. In that but, uh, regard, uh, you know, actually, uh, being, but you all are not forgotten. Um, in my heart, in my spirit, and oh, uh, throughout the United States. Uh, you have so many people that love you. There's uh, the monuments in Washington, D.C., and there the, the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, there's quite a few of the Korean War soldiers. So it is a war that was forgotten, but will always be remembered by those because uh, we feel that it was a special time and uh, really appreciate what y'all did because a lot of people feel that this, this particular war um, was just on the you were understudy to the World War World War II. Right. So exactly. can you talk about that World War II how it it uh, interfaced with the Korean War because we thought the war would be over after World War II. War, was it World War II that we thought that it would be over? Right. That was yeah. the war to end all wars. Yeah. Um, no, the uh, the war ended in in uh, 1945 yes, with the, uh, the the release of the atomic bombs um, and so the war came kind of quickly to an end World War two came to an end um, and actually the ship that I was on uh, was involved in World War two I wasn't on on it at the time but uh, the ship was was commissioned um, in, in 1945 and served in World War two mm -hmm. in fact fired the last round of the World War II on Japan soil just prior to the signing of, of, the, uh, of, the, end of, the, of the war. Um, and in fact, the ship was in uh, Tokyo Bay when uh, MacArthur signed the, uh, the end of World War II. USS St. Paul was present. Um, and again, as you say, we thought everything was smooth and, and over, mm -hmm. uh, but there was still a lot of uncertainty between China, between Russia, and the United States. Um, there was a lot of problems with communism. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a, the problem in China wow. between the communists and the, the, the other Chinese people. Yes, uh, and in fact, in, in 1950, I guess it was 50, um, prior to the start of the Korean War, yes. our ship was in Formosa. Um, okay. Because there was a battle, you had the, the Chinese on Taiwan um, and the Chinese on the mainland, and you know they didn't get along. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the, the ship actually was involved in, in uh, Formosa at the time, Taiwan. Um, and then when the Korean War started, we just went right on up to, uh, to Korea as part of that. So um, yeah, we thought the war was over, but there was that problem between the Chinese, the Russians, and the U.S. So. I have a very deep, profound love for history, and I appreciate your history lesson today. It, it's just, um, it's very enlightening. Can you tell me, how has this country ch changed since that war? Do you 
Oh, in, infinitely. Um, you know, this was was back before the age of technology. You know, I mentioned as a fire control technician, we were responsible for the computers mm -hmm. that did the aiming and whatnot. But these were not computers like you think of today. These were mechanical computers, electromechanical computers, uh, gears and you know drives and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so nothing like you see today. Um, so it's changed dramatically, not the least of which is, is the technology issue. Um, I, I, I liked my time of service in the Navy. Uh, so when it came time to leave, I was torn. I, I could have stayed in the Navy, but I could have gotten out, taken advantage of the GI Bill, and gone to college. So it was a no-brainer. So I left the Navy, uh, although Navy was very good to me and enjoyed it, um, and went to college. Um, oh. So. Um, Where did you go to college? I went to uh, Purdue University, being originally from Indiana, yes. and got a degree in electrical engineering from Purdue. Um, and again, interesting, after that, I went to work for General Electric mm -hmm. and spent all my time with GE. Uh, I was with GE for 30 years. All of my technical involvement with GE was in aerospace defense. Um, got heavily involved mm -hmm. in um, nuclear weapons, as a matter of fact, with uh, GE. We built the uh, reentry bodies oh, for did? the uh, Minuteman, Poseidon mm -hmm. uh, missiles that are still in existence. Hopefully, today? working today if yes. we ever need them. But what the, the the bomb was a very significant event. It ended the Second World War, mm -hmm. and really, it, we, we kind of look back at Korea and say, with those hordes of Chinese, mm -hmm. why didn't MacArthur, you know, just continue his push to the Yalu River, which is a separation? We had the atomic bomb. Russia did not have the bomb at that time, nor, nor Chinese. We could have eliminated the problems that we have today with North Korea. But, you know, that was not to be. And probably, fortunately so, had we used, you know, the atomic bomb in Korea, mm -hmm. um, who knows what the situation might have been. But it would have resolved what we have today. So um, it's changed a lot. It's changed because of technology. But that weapon has changed wars rather right. dramatically. Um, yeah, technology is the new way, new way. today. Yeah. You, do you keep in touch with any of your old veteran friends, your buddies? Or? Absolutely. Um, the, the ship, when it was uh, commissioned, had a crew of 1,200. Yes. And it was uh, in commission for over 25 years. So a lot of people served on board. We have an organization called the USS St. Paul Association. Wow. So anybody who ever served on that ship can belong to this association. Okay. Um, and we publish a quarterly magazine. Okay. Um, in fact, I've left one for you. Thank you. Um, and we have a reunion every other year, a biennial reunion. So is, is it held all over the United States, or we is it local? Or? One year on the East Coast, two years later the Midwest, and two years later on the West Coast. So we alternate. Alternate. Uh, we've got one coming up in September that will be in San Antonio. So uh, looking forward to that. So it's good to get together with uh, you know, a lot of the shipmates. What's happening with me, though, you know, getting old, uh, a lot of the Korean War veterans, there still are a few World War II veterans from the ship that uh, are still alive and, and well, but they're getting pretty thin. I think we only maybe have maybe 10 left ten. that uh, survived the, from World War II. And the Korean veterans were starting to get pretty thin as well. But it's good to get together and um, see guys that you served with. And we get together and we trade stories, and they're like fish stories. Every time you get together, they get bigger and, and bigger. And, and bigger. <laughs> so it's fun to, uh, to do. And, uh, and have an opportunity to talk about your families right. and your grandchildren right. and just how life has just right. uh, transpired exactly. over the years. Exactly. And you mentioned San Antonio. I was stationed there oh, in the right. Army. I served in the Army as, as well, uh, peacetime. But uh, remember that I was at the Academy of uh, Health Sciences there uh, okay. for um, my medic and operating room specialist. That was my MOS. So 
Um, it was, it, I believe San Antonio has really grown. I was oh, there in the 70s or mid-70s, and beautiful it was great. City. It was a beautiful, beautiful city. city, yes. The River Walk. Yeah. yeah, the Alamo and yeah. all those places. So tell me, do you read a lot about, uh, what do you like to do now since you, uh, you the war is, uh, has passed? And you've been an engineer, you were an engineer for 30 years, and uh, what do you do for fun now? Well, it was interesting. Uh, the time I was with GE, uh, most of that was involved technical work. Uh, but I spent time doing a lot of recruiting for GE. Wow. Uh, to go out and recruit new mm -hmm. engineers and whatnot. Um, and I moved to Atlanta in uh, 1983 with GE to head up GE's corporate recruiting and university relations program. Um, so did a lot of going yes. to colleges and uh, trying to encourage graduating engineers to come to work for GE. Uh, so I did that for, for GE for uh, about seven years and then took a retirement from GE to do mm -hmm. from doing that, where I was the manager of the Southern Region, um, and went to work for Georgia Tech, uh, wow. based on that that experience. I was the director of career services at Georgia Tech, so in, involved in finding, helping students find jobs and relocate. So as a result of that, Remarkable. I've done a lot of career counseling, career uh, consulting, that kind of thing. Uh, and continue that after I left Georgia Tech and still do a little bit of that part-time. Uh, I do resume referrals, reviews, uh, some career consulting for, for people uh, now. Um, but of late, I've been pretty active in some of the local politics in Villarica. Oh, so, really? Uh, I'm on the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, for Villarica. Oh, wow. Um, That's excellent. All of the city council meetings and get involved with uh, what's going on with the growth in Villarica. And yeah, uh, Mayor so Reese, is that Mayor, Mayor Reese? Reese and, uh, was on his campaign committee to Oh, yeah, he's a elected. good friend of mine, Jeff very, Reese. He's he, a very good mayor, very good mayor. And uh, is it city council McDougal? Gil yeah. McDougal, yeah, he Gil. represents the ward that I'm in. Um, so, yeah, no Gil very, very well. Yeah, so they, actually we meet once a month uh, what once a quarter yeah. uh, because they're part of the Douglas County right. uh, um, line so that is amazing so tell me this you say you sometimes you still communicate with your friends mm -hmm. sounds like you ought to have a great time and just as we wrap things up today because I really appreciate you coming in and telling me about this uh, the opportunity and I'm quite sure if my dad was here he would be right beside us and he That's is great. here in That's spirit Absolutely. Uh, and I, I know he's smiling from abo above great. because you've shared what you and him both experienced uh, it was the coldest winter and when you read that book it you know the the, the actual cover seems lightweight but it's very obvious when you open the book, I, it talks about, it, it discusses those sub-degree temperatures. And I can imagine trying to fight a war and, and almost frozen to death. That, and, and that's, I, my hat is off to you all. Well, thank you. With the thank ultimate you. respect for um, MacArthur and President Truman and all of the troops and the 36,000 that died during the war um, I'm humble because you all are the reason why we're here today. That war was forgotten, but if you had not fought, uh, fought the war, we may not be here to just discuss me and you talking today, so exactly. to discuss the, exactly. just the topic of that war. Um, our president and all of our presidents uh, subsequent to Truman have actually honored the war uh, in one way or the other. other. You just cannot forget it. So as we wrap up, my last question to you, if you had a chance to do it all over again, would you do it again if you had to go? Absolutely. Um, as I mentioned before, the Navy was good to me. Um, you know, it got me an education. I would never have been able to go to college had yes. it not been uh, for my time in service. Um, so yes, I'd, I'd do it all over again. Um, you know, sorry to see the, the loss of lives that we had. Um, obviously, you never want to see that happen, um, but gain some invaluable experience. As, as you mentioned, I, I've never been so cold in my life. The, the day, Christmas Eve of 1950, um, 
when we were pulling these Marines and, and, and Army troops off of uh, Hung Nam Harbor, it was reported to be 50, 55 degrees below zero. Um, and again, that was something that the U.S. had no anticipation of the weather that troops were going to have to face in, in North Korea. Mm -hmm. um, and it was wow. brutal. They just were totally unprepared it's for that. So it was, it was cold. Uh, yeah, I'd do it over again. Um, in fact, I, because of the Korean War, that's yes, where I met my, my wife. Um, so kind of an interesting part and a good part of the, uh, of the experience of the Korean War. Thank you. She was uh, in nurses training in yes. uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles, Los, okay. Los Angeles County Hospital. And um, I was in communication with a girl that I went to high school with who for some reason or other had gone from Indiana to Los Angeles to, uh -huh. to do nursing training. Yes. Uh, why she trained in, in California, I don't know. But at any rate, we were communicating, so I made arrangements with her for a date when yes. the ship came back uh, from our first cruise to Korea. Um, and a buddy of mine said, um, well, that's great. Why don't you see if you can get me a date, too? So <laughs> I got hold of Donna and uh, yeah. said, you know, could you find somebody for my friend? Mm -hmm. So she said, yeah. So we went on a double date, uh, Donna and the other girl that she ended up fixing up with my friend was Rosemary. Um, uh -huh. And so I stopped seeing Donna and started dating Rosemary at that point. And, okay. Uh, eventually, Years a couple of years later, we, we were married. Well, a couple of years. It was after she had finished nurses training. I had gotten out of the service and graduated from, from college. So. Wow. But uh, that's where we met. Okay. Uh, again, a good part of the Korean War. <laughs> yeah, that was the good part. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming in today and speaking with me. You are certainly an inspiration to me, uh, to this county, uh, to the United States and to our youth, because uh, I have some interns coming this summer. We have an internship program, and I would like to invite you back to spend uh, just a half a day with us. I won't That'd press you and just uh, share your experiences with them, because I want our youth to realize that uh, if you try hard enough, you can do anything. Exactly. And right. I appreciate uh, your, your story and your survival story, number one, and then your professional career story which you had a segue, those two married together, and I, I'm just, I'm honored today to spend time with you. Well, thank you for inviting me, and I would be delighted to come back and uh, spend some time with the interns and talk to them, because uh, uh, youth today do not really appreciate, I think, some of the things that we might still yet face. Again, I could go back to Korea. Lord hope we don't have to go back there again. Right. But it's uh, it's the hot spot in the world today. So yeah. yeah, it's still hot. They need to understand what got us there and why we're there and why we're doing what we're doing. So be yeah. glad to. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. It's been great talking to you. And, yes, sir. Uh, would very much have liked to have met your father. And um, I, d I don't think we did, but uh, you never know. So you never know. If it's a small world. Exactly. But most importantly, thank you for serving. Thank you our country, it. and we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. I'd like to take this moment to thank you for joining us for this month's edition of Clearly. See you next time.